Good morning, good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I'll know that you're watching. Good morning, Michelle. And if you're tuning in for the very first time to any of my broadcasts, type a number one in the comments so I can come back and welcome you. Great morning, great morning, everybody. Come on in with a heart of worship. Go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. Amen. I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Come on in with a heart of worship this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. You all come on in. I'm going to go grab my water. You know what to do. Make sure you share the broadcast. Type in hashtag shared. Grab your Bibles, grab your journals, grab your water, and I'll be right back. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Great morning, everyone. Did y'all grab your water this morning? <laughs> Good morning. Y'all type in the comments, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you. Good morning. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. <laughs> Good morning. type in as nobody like you. Great morning, everyone. Good morning, Karina. So good to see you. There's none like you. Make sure you grab your, your oil that you've anointed your hands. Good morning. Nobody. There's none like you. Good morning. There's none like you. Anybody else believe that? Nobody. Nobody. Good morning, Aisha. Good morning, Michelle. So good to see you this morning. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Maria. Nobody. Nobody. Good morning. Nobody. Anybody else believe that this morning? Good morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Y'all type in the comments. Good morning. So good to see you all. So glad you're here again. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. My name is Keisha Johnson. You can find us here every Monday through Friday. Good morning, Valerie, at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all go ahead and type the number four in the comments for me. Type the number four in the comments. We are journeying through the one-year Bible. This is our fourth year. Super excited about it. You can jump in at any time. Um, and the publisher is Tyndale, and we are reading and listening through the New Living Translation. Do you have to get the one-year Bible? No, you don't, but I encourage you to get the one-year Bible. I absolutely love it. Make sure you've grabbed your oil and anointed your hands. Y'all type in the comments, my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed oily anointed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover hallelujah
how do I know? Because the Bible tells me so, right? Y'all type in the Bible tells me so. All right, so we're gonna going, going to go ahead and hop in. If you haven't already, type at least one thing in the comments. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and share this out. Type in hashtag shared and we'll dive in. So Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We're so thankful for another chance to get it right. Thankful for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship and to spend time in your word. We invite your presence in Holy Spirit. We say, come and have your way. Father, I ask that you open our hearts and our minds to hear from you. Speak, Lord. We are listening. We are expecting you to speak to us this morning. We are expecting answers to our prayers on this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all type in the comments, speak, Lord. I am listening. All right, God is always speaking. The question is, are we listening, right? Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to pull up the One Year Bible, and we will dive in. It has been raining nonstop here in Georgia since yesterday morning, nonstop. I don't think it stopped at all since yesterday morning. It's like, it's still raining. How was the weather where you are? I think it's like, I woke up, it's like in the 50s this morning. Yeah. And my Christmas tree is still up in the living room. And my lights are still on. I get up and plug them up every morning. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> oh, remind me to tell you all what I think it is about me and this Christmas tree. All right, can we just talk for a few minutes before we dive in? All right, I know there's someone gonna be, why are we, you know, we're just gonna talk and then we'll listen to the one year Bible. So remember I shared, <clears throat> or some of you may or may not know, for years <clears throat> I struggled in the months of October, November, and December, right? It was a real struggle for me just because of the way my family was. We weren't happy around the holidays. We didn't enjoy the holidays. So I noticed around October, we I would begin to, not even realizing it, but stirring things up, like stirring drama up in the household and always just expecting something negative to happen, right? And so I did not like the holidays. I just did not like the holidays. I didn't like Thanksgiving. I didn't like Christmas because I always felt like I was alone. Even when I got older, married, have children, I just didn't enjoy the holidays. So I was always in a hurry, right? As soon as Christmas was over, sometimes the next day, I would snatch the decorations down, be ready to take the tree down, and just be ready to move on. Um, <clears throat> And it was really hard. So uh, I think it was starting three years ago. Y'all type the number three in the comments. So I know y'all are still with me. So it started about three years ago. I made a decision, right? Because it's our choice, right? I made a decision that I wasn't going to allow <clears throat> my holidays to be that way anymore. And um, so it started three years ago, that first year when I realized, okay, this was a nice holiday. There was no drama. Although I, I kind of felt like, you know, oh my gosh, there's nothing going on. When you're so used to drama and chaos happening, um, you know, you kind of expect that. So it was three years ago. And I remember posting about it. Some of you saw it, that I decided to enjoy the holidays, enjoy the holidays with family. Last year, you know, the holidays were great. This year, it was absolutely great. And I realized I'm not in a hurry. I am going to enjoy this. I'm going to drag this out as long as I can. I just could not figure out why I didn't want to take this Christmas tree down. And I'm like, God, what is this about this Christmas tree? I know that I enjoy the lights. So it's not even that I don't feel like taking it down. I don't have the time to take it down. I am just in still, right? Still enjoying this season, still enjoying this time. So that's what it is about the Christmas tree. And yesterday the plumber had to come out and he kind of walked past the living room to get to the bathroom and he sees this tree still lit up and other lights in the living room. And he's looking like, what are they doing? And I just, the bathroom's that way, sir. You know, and kind of just walked him past the tree um, to the bathroom. So that's kind of why mine is still up. To some of you that make sense, to some of you that make, may not make any sense, and you're probably wondering, who cares? Why is she even sharing this? 
but if you've been following me for quite some time, you know. So it's been a journey, right? It, it's been a journey. I'm not sure why your Christmas tree up, but I figured out why mine is still up. And so, yeah, I'm going to do that. I am going to go find some Valentine's Day decorations. Um, the family, my husband and the kids were like, it's time to take this tree down. I'm like, not yet not yet so I started researching different ways that um, I can it, it makes sense it now makes sense to me okay and so yeah um, you know I'm just enjoying it I wasn't in a hurry this year I was I wasn't in a hurry and then I just began to thank God you know just so thankful so I don't know how long it's gonna be up at some point it'll come down um, Lisa said yes it has been grateful we didn't get of all of what was predicted absolutely and so, um, and all that being said, the reason why I'm excited because the curse has been broken. Y'all type in the comments, the curse has been broken. Uh, when I tell you all, the curse has been broken. No family drama, right? In the home, outside the home, no family drama. The curse has been broken and I am excited about it, right? I'm excited about it. So that's a big deal. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that. <clears throat> and I'm sure that there's probably somebody on this broadcast that can relate to that. Somebody on this broadcast that probably still has their tree up for the same reason, or maybe not. Maybe you could just relate and understand what I mean when I say the curse has been broken and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I am excited about it. All right. So God is good. And I didn't think that would ever happen. I was just like, is it always going to be this way? Um, but God is good. And it started with me making a decision, right? It starts with us sometimes making a decision. I made a decision that it was going to stop, right? It starts with us making a decision. And I made a decision. And that first year that I made that decision, all hell tried to break loose. I was like, not today, devil. It's not today, devil. I made a decision. All right, so anyway, I just wanted to share that. I share everything else, right? So why not share that? <laughs> Let's dive into the one-year Bible. So it, it starts with us making a decision, right? Change starts with us. Number one, acknowledging the problem, right? Recognizing the problem and making a decision to change, to change things. It starts with us, right? It starts with us, so... Anyway, just wanted to share that. If the volume is okay, February type a number two. Our reading in the Old Testament today will come from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 16. Is the volume we'll go to okay? Chapter 21, verse 21. And here's what we'll find there. We'll find a sanctified people who, because we belong to God, we must be separated Crap from sin. Water. God's people are set apart from the world and unto the up, Lord. Man. We'll be reading about a submissive people. To impress the people with the fear of the Lord, God demonstrated his power at Sinai and warned them not to come near. Is that better? It was the childhood of the nation. More? And the people, like children, learned from rewards and punishments. Is that better? The Israelites were not saved from Egypt by obeying the law. But their obedience enabled them to enjoy all the blessings God had for them. I cannot emphasize strongly enough the importance that God places on walking in obedience. And that's the place of blessing. As a matter of fact, it's a biblical principle as sure as gravity. And the principle is obedience brings blessing. The law does not save sinners. It reveals God's holiness and man's need for salvation. It's a mirror. It shows us how dirty we really are. Thank you. But it does not provide the cleansing we need. Only Christ can do that. Okay. If we love God and obey him, we will also love others and serve them. Some people obey God because of fear. Others obey only because they want his blessing. Hmm. The highest motive for obedience is simply our love for the Lord. But what if we disobey the Lord? God made provision for Israel in the prescribed sacrifices. He's made provision for believers today through the work of Christ. Believers are not under law, but under grace. This is not an excuse for sin, but an That's encouragement for loving not obedience an excuse. to his will. And with that, let's begin our reading today in Scripture here in the Old Testament. 
February 4, Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, through chapter 21, verse 21. On the morning of the third day, there was a powerful thunder and lightning storm, and a dense cloud came down upon the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn, and all the people trembled. Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain shook with a violent earthquake. As the horn blast grew Amen. louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God thundered his reply for all to hear. The Lord came down on top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. Then the Lord told Moses, go back down and warn the people not to cross the boundaries. They must not come up here to see the Lord, for those who do will die. Even the priests who regularly come near to the Lord must purify themselves, or I will destroy them. But Lord, the people cannot come up on the mountain, Moses protested. You already told them not to. You told me to set boundaries around the mountain and to declare it off limits. But the Lord said, go down anyway and bring Aaron back with you. In the meantime, do not let the priests or the people cross the boundaries to come up here. If they do, I will punish them. So Moses went down to the people and told them what the Lord had said. Then God instructed the people as follows. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from slavery in Egypt. Do not worship any other gods besides me. Do not make idols of any kind, whether in the shape of birds or animals or fish. You must never worship or bow down to them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, who will not share your affection with any other God. I do not leave unpunished the sins of those who hate me, but I punish the children for the sins of their parents there it is. to the Thank third you. and fourth generations. But I lavish my love on those who love me and obey my commands, even for a thousand generations. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days a week are set apart for your daily duties and regular work. But the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any kind of work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. Good morning. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. I was looking then for you. Then he rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God will give you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else your neighbor owns. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the horn, and when they saw the lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. And they said to Moses, You tell us what God says, and we will listen. But don't let God speak directly to us. If he does, we will die. Don't be afraid, Moses said. For God has come in this way to show you his awesome power. From now on, 
Let your fear of him keep you from sinning. As the people stood in the distance, Moses entered into the deep darkness where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel. You are witnesses that I have spoken to you from heaven. Remember, you must not make or worship idols of silver or gold. Good morning. The altars you make for me must be simple altars of earth. Offer on such altars your sacrifices to me, your burnt offerings and peace offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Build altars in the places where I remind you who I am, and I will come and bless you there. If you build altars from stone, use only uncut stones. Do not chip or shake the stones with a tool for that would make them unfit for holy use. And you may not approach my altar by steps. Thank you for if sharing. If you do, someone might look up under the skirts of your clothing and see your nakedness. Here are some other instructions you must present to Israel. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he is to serve for only six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave and then married afterward, only he will go free in the seventh year. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife will be freed with him. If his master gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then the man will be free in the seventh year. But his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may plainly declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I would rather not go free. If he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door and publicly pierce his ear with an awl. After that, the slave will belong to his master forever. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again. But he is not allowed to sell her to foreigners, since he is the one who broke the contract with her. And if the slave girl's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may no longer treat her as a slave girl, but he must treat her as his daughter. If he himself marries her and then takes another wife, he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as his wife. If he fails in any of these three ways, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Anyone who hits a person hard enough to cause death must be put to death. But if it is an accident and God allows it to happen, I will appoint a place where the slayer can run for safety. However, if someone deliberately attacks and kills another person, then the slayer must be dragged even from my altar and put to death. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. Kidnappers must be killed, whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. Anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. Now suppose two people quarrel, and one hits the other with a stone or fist, causing injury but not death. If the injured person is later able to walk again, even with a crutch, the assailant will be innocent. Nonetheless, the assailant must pay for time lost because of the injury, and must pay for the medical expenses. If a male or female slave is beaten and dies, the owner must be punished. If the slave recovers after a couple of days, however, then the owner should not be punished, since the slave is the owner's property. Mm. Y'all drop some hearts in the comments for the word of God. February 4. Our reading in the New Testament today will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 13 through 39. And this is a chapter of stinging rebuke to the religious know-it-alls of his day. Jesus takes the Pharisees and Sadducees to task 
and uh, he really uh, he kind of makes toast of them. He uh, calls them uh, a lot of names, hypocrites, uh, other uh, names that are not very complimentary. And of course, uh, the point is we have those religious know-it-alls in our Christian culture today. And Jesus says to uh, those who think they know so much about the scriptures, uh, about God, and uh, take it upon themselves to teach others, to tell others how to live their lives, when they themselves wouldn't uh, live that way, nor would they help anybody else. They wouldn't lift a finger to help somebody else live a holy life. Uh, they are teachers of the law for profit. And uh, not only for profit, but to uh, feel good about themselves at the expense of others. So Jesus, the Son of God, if you can imagine uh, the irony of this, it's just absolutely incredible that here is the uh, Son of God who has visited the earth, and of all the people in the world who should know who he is and what he's all about, it should be these teachers of the law. After all, they are the religious experts of the day. But they totally miss it. Oh, I mean, a mile wide miss it. Watch out for the legalists of our day. They're, they're out there in droves, and uh, you'll always find a lot of religious people who want to tell you what to do and tell you what God is saying to you. Don't well. let other people open up your mail from God. Uh, you are quite capable of. God has a letter for you, and he wants a personal relationship with you. Well, let's see how it all comes down here in the New Testament as we begin reading there today. He said, don't let other people open up your mail from God. Come Number on. Four. <laughs> Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 through 39. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you won't let others enter the kingdom of heaven and you won't go in yourselves. Yes, how terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, for you cross land and sea to make one convert. And then you turn him into twice the son of hell, as you yourselves are. That's why we Blind need to know guides, the word for ourselves. How terrible it will be for you. For you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple, you can break that oath. But then you say that it is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And you say that to take an oath by the altar can be broken, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding. How blind! For which is greater, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? When you swear by the altar, you are swearing by it and by everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven, you are swearing by the throne of God and by God who sits on the throne. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law I'll and you Pharisees, God is still on the throne. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest part of your income, but you ignore the important things of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but you should not leave undone the more important things. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat. Then you swallow a camel. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. You are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees. First, wash the inside of the cup, and then the outside will become clean, too. Well. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Ooh, that used to be You try to look like upright people outwardly. Outside. Ugly inside, on the inside. Your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. For you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed and decorate the graves of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, we never would have joined them in killing the prophets. In saying that, 
You're accusing yourselves of being the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead. Finish what they started. Snakes. Sons of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of hell? I will send you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. You will kill some by crucifixion and whip others in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. As a result, you will become guilty of murdering all the godly people from righteous Abel to Zechariah, son of Baruchiah, whom you murdered in the temple between the altar and the sanctuary. I assure you, all the accumulated judgment of the centuries will break upon the heads of this very generation. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is left to you, empty and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Ooh. Psalm 28, verses 1 through 9. David's enemies were undermining his reputation and his work. So he turned to the Lord with two special requests. Number one, that God would speak to him. And I have to admit, I'm that same way. Aren't you? Don't you want God to speak to you in a way that you'll hear and understand? Maybe not in an audible voice. But uh, the Lord speaking to you in a yeah, way that right. you can clearly here. discern that it is, in fact, the Lord who is communicating. And the other request, that God would save him. Yes, Lord, save me. Apart from you, Lord Christ, I can do nothing. Apart from you, Lord, I am nothing. I get to go to heaven completely and totally on the virtue of another person, my Lord Jesus Christ. God speaks to us in answered prayer. If you are silent, David says here, I might just as well be dead. And if you don't deliver me, Lord, you're treating me like the enemy. Uh, some pretty powerful arguments there. Well, God heard him and helped him, and that was cause for rejoicing. He does the same for you and me today as we trust in him. You can rejoice in the Lord even when you cannot rejoice in yourself or your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Trust God to be your strength, mm -hmm. your song and your salvation. He is the faithful shepherd who can carry both you and your burdens. Psalm 28, verses 1 through 9. Good morning. A Psalm of David. O oh Lord, you are my rock of safety. Please help me. Don't refuse to answer me. For if you were silent, I might as well give up and die. Listen to my prayer for mercy as I cry out to you for help as I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Don't drag me away with the wicked and those who do evil, those who speak friendly words to their neighbors while planning evil in their hearts. Give them the punishment they so richly deserve. Measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. Pay them back for all their evil deeds. Give them a taste of what they have done to others. They care nothing for what the Lord has done or for what his hands have made. So he will tear them down like old buildings and they will never be rebuilt. Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry God's for mercy. Gonna come as praise the, the Lord. Lord is my strength, my shield from every danger. I trust in him with all my heart. He helps me. And my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord protects his people and gives victory to his anointed king. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them forever in your arms. Amen. Yes, Proverbs chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey them and live. Guard my teachings as your most precious possession. Tie them on your fingers as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. 
Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them hold you back from an affair with an immoral woman, from listening to the flattery of an adulterous woman. Amen. Y'all drop some more hearts for the word. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, I said, oh, I didn't have, I didn't feel like the Lord gave me anything to share um, for the family chat. So, I thought, oh, I have nothing to share. But um, I did read um, a devotional yesterday that I wanted to um share with you all to kind of close us out and then um, with a few declarations and I love that it goes perfectly with today's reading from the book of Psalm but first y'all drop personal devotion in the comments uh, personal devotion we want to make some make sure we spend some time and go into personal devotion today whatever time um, that is for you if it's not directly after the broadcast um, so the question we want to ask ourselves today is, am I making a habit of memorizing God's commands? Am I making, if someone can type this in a comment, am I making a habit of, hold the line, of memorizing God's commands? Am I making a habit of memorizing God's commands? And you want to choose one verse to memorize this week. And I think some of you have been doing that as I've been updating the caption and kind of um, memorizing and meditating on the verses um, of the day. So am I making a habit of memorizing God's commands? That's it. That's simple. That's all I have for today. All right. So time of personal devotion. And I wrote down a few other things. Um... But that's not for you all. So I'm going to go ahead and read a devotional today and um, close us out with our declarations. Someone type in the comments. Um, I'm going to read verse 7. Um, so it's Psalm 28, verse 7. Psalm 28, verse 7. And it reads, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out into songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives strength to his people. And I read um, part of verse 28, uh, verse 8. So that was Psalm, and I read verse 7, and then A. Can I get this right? My brain is going faster than the words are coming out. Psalm 28, verse 7, and then A. Eight, part A. <laughs> All right, just put seven through eight. Just put 20, 28, seven through eight. 28, seven through eight. And y'all type in the comments, I trust God to be my strength. I trust God to be my strength. And the question is, you can even ask yourself, let that be the second question. Do I trust God to be my strength? Do you truly trust God to be your strength? There was a time where I did not trust God to be my strength because I had a lot of trust issues and he helped me to work through that. So the second question for personal devotion is, do I trust God to be my strength? All right, so I'm gonna read um, the devotional today, which I thought was so fitting for today, right? Um, as we read verse seven, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all of my heart. And then um, verse eight, the Lord gives his people strength. So the, um, I titled the devotional, God is your rock and shield. God is your rock and shield. It says each day arrives with its own unique problems and setbacks and dilemmas. Do not live in the past. I say that all the time, right? The only time we want to go back to the past is to think about what the Lord has done and to just thank him for how far he brought us, right? Because we never, ever, ever want to forget, at least I never want to forget what the Lord has done and how far he's brought me from. Don't live in the past. There's no future in it. Looking back at life in the rearview mirror is like reliving past hurts, 
reliving past frustrations and reliving past disappointments. And I remember there was a time where I made a habit of doing that, right? And um, and I'll say this because it just dropped in my spirit. Um, you you can be addicted to pain, right? You can be addicted to pain. You can be addicted to drama. Hashtag ask me how I know. And I had to ask the Lord to help me to overcome that, right? Because I came from a household of nothing but pain and nothing but drama. And then I realized at some point in my life, I couldn't function. I didn't know how to function without feeling some type of pain, without feeling some type of hurt, without dealing with some kind of drama. I didn't know like what to do. And I know that may not make sense to some of you, but you really can be addicted to hurt. Actually, I believe even just from um, reading one of John Eckhart's book, I forgot the title of this particular one, where he also um, identified like pain and hurt and deep pain and deep hurt as a spirit one where you need deliverance from right and so anyway um i'm not going there but go ahead and type in the comments i will not live in the past right i will not live in the past yeah okay so viola you can understand and i'm sure that can resonate with somebody or if you didn't know I just helped you make some things make sense and you really truly can be addicted to hurt, addicted to pain, deep pain and drama and you need truly need deliverance and healing from that, right? So let me get back to on the devotional. Um, looking at li looking back at life in the rearview mirror is like living past hurts, pains, frustrations and disappointments. You can only move forward with your life if you pay attention to what's in the windshield your future the father says allow me to show you how to move beyond your past it's really going to take the father to help you to move beyond your past some of us are stuck there and don't know how to move forward so sometime today in your personal devotion ask him ask him lord i'm stuck here help me show me how to move forward show me how to move forward beyond my past he says i am your rock and shield he wants to remind somebody this morning i am your rock and shield as you continue to pray and trust me says the father i shall win your battles and deliver you from the snares of the enemy you can count on me to display my strength as your rock and protection Y'all type in the comments, God, I thank you for being my protector as your, let me back up. You can count on me to display your strength as your rock and protection, as your shield in times of trouble, danger, and distress. Um, so it, um, I think he touched a little bit on that one too. And it's the other one, unshakable, unshakable. Um, I always forget the title of that book. Um, I always want to say it starts with an S, um, but he goes a lot deeper into that in Unshakable. He touches on it a little bit um, in Destroying the Spirit of Rejection, but um, I loved that book as well as Unshakable um, because that made a lot of things make sense. It really honestly made my whole entire life make sense and um, really brought healing, um, really brought a lot of healing and deliverance. It's definitely not a speed read. You know, some books you just kind of have to take your time and read through. Um, so uh, did I finish? I, I, I'm sorry. I went from one thing and I saw a comment. So yes, um, this devotional blessed me today and I thought it went right with um, our reading today. So I didn't read the psalm. And so as we were sitting reading psalm, I was like, well, look at God. You know, uh, it goes with uh, the devotional today. So that blessed me. So yes, you can be addicted to pain. You can be addicted to hurt. You can be addicted to drama. Um, and for me, it was like a, it became a drug. And honestly, I felt like that's just what my whole entire childhood felt like, right? Just trauma, no peace, hurt, pain, disappointment. And um, when you learn how to function in that environment, and when um, the Lord brought me out of that environment, I felt lost, right? I felt like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I was, um, how who I was, and didn't realize that, you know, why when I went, when I would go through life and 
I would intentionally, if I can be transparent, stir up drama. You know, I mean, I'm not talking like messy, messy. I'm just saying drama is drama. But I would stir things up and I didn't understand why. I'm like, why do I do this? Why? And when things would get too quiet and when things would be too peaceful, I would get antsy, you know, just like a drug addict would. Right. Um, yeah. And um, and so I had to just get before the Lord. Like when I tell you, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, see, the problem is many people um, think they want change, but they're just not sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Because if you were really sick and tired of being sick and tired, you wouldn't even be making all the excuses that you make, right? Like yesterday, I was on, and y'all, I, I am never on the phone, very rarely on the phone for this long, but my good friend, and mentor called me um, number one we had some catching up to do because it's been a little while since we spoke but I looked at my phone and I'm like my god we've been on the phone for three hours in like 40 something minutes but it was a great conversation so as I'm talking to her about some things right because I'm not perfect I had to catch myself but I thank God that now I can recognize when even I'm making excuses you know, I, she would ask me a question, I would say, but, and say something. And I'm like, oh, that's just an excuse, right? And so I can recognize now when I make excuses. And I tell you all, I used to be the queen of excuses. But when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know, all them excuses, I don't have time, I don't have the money, this is too hard. Whatever your excuse is, those excuses just go right out the window. Um, they go right out the window. So some of you all need to ask God to help you get to the place where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so, um, you know, where was I going? I, I went down a rabbit trail and I forgot where I was. I felt like I was about to go way down this rabbit trail and I heard the Lord say, reel it on in. <laughs> Cause I, I, look, once I, look, I, once I do this, it's about to be a long conversation. And so I just had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's when true change happened. Like all the excuses, whatever your excuse is, it just goes out the window, right? It just goes out the window. And, um, oh, y'all, I read, um, uh, we were Matthew 23, verses 27. And it said, for you are like, I'm not saying it's just is this deep for me but I'm just saying it says for you are like whitewashed tombs beautiful on the outside right just beautiful on the outside beautiful smile see I can say this now because I like myself right beautiful on the outside but filled on the inside with all sorts of impurity I felt that I said "Ooh, did y'all hear me that used to be me beautiful on the outside, right? Had this beautiful smile. Everyone used to tell me I had a beautiful smile and I'd be like, who me? But now I can say I have a beautiful smile and filled with all sorts of yuck on the inside. And I had to get to work so that my inside could match my outside. I was ugly on the inside. Can anybody else relate? And it's great. It's growth when you can say, Ooh, that used to be me, right? I felt that. I said, ooh, I felt that. And I wrote, thank you, God, for cleansing me. Thank you, God, for cleansing me. Can anybody else say, thank you, God? I've been working so hard for the insides to match the outside. <laughs> I've been working so hard so my insides would match the outside because you don't want to be pretty listen and it all comes out anyway right because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so i would smile and as soon as i opened up my mouth i was the ugliest person there was because all of the ugly stuff on the outside came right on out i said mm, that used to be me but i thank god for cleansing me but we got to put in the work right we have to put in the work y'all type in the comments i will put in the work we have to put in the work right we do our part god is faithful to do his and um and what i can say it felt like things were getting uglier before they got prettier right things felt like they were getting worse before they got better now 
Hi, Yolanda. I was frozen for a minute. So listen, I've, I've been working hard and putting in the work. I thank God I didn't quit. Sometimes you got to slow down. But what I love is that there are times where God will give you a break, right? He'll give you a break. Then it's like, all right, it's time to get back to work. Then he'll give you a break where you can just breathe. Can anybody else relate? Then it's like, all right, it's time to get back to work. So I love, love, love that there are those times where he's like, all right, my baby girl needs a break. Let me give her a little break. <laughs> then it's time to get back to work, right? Um, so what else stood out to me? Um, and then I loved um, in Exodus verse 20, where it said, don't be afraid. Moses answered them for God. The, when um, the narrator read it, he changed it a little bit. But in my Bible, it says, Moses answered them for God has come in this way to test you. And so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. Y'all type in the comments, the fear of the Lord will keep me from sinning. It was the fear of the Lord that kept me from sinning. It was the fear of the Lord that kept me from sinning. Listen, the fear of the Lord and being afraid, two totally different things. And that didn't change for me. And you gotta thank God for the people that he puts in your life, right? That really, truly love you. And I said this all the time with to you all, right? The day um, she asked me, do you fear God? And I got offended. Um, it was verse 20. Um, it was um, Exodus, is it still 19? Exodus 19, no, Exodus 19, Exodus 20, verse 20. Sorry, Exodus 20, verse 20. Y'all know it's hard to see the chapters in the one-year Bible. The fear of the Lord will keep me from sinning. And she asked me, do you fear God? After I got over myself and got over my offense, I remember coming home asking God, you know, do I fear you? And I realized that I didn't really fear him, and I asked him to help me to fear him. And I will tell you, you're, and that's why we do a lot of things that we do that we know we shouldn't be doing because we don't truly fear God, right? But the fear of the Lord, I'm here to tell you, will truly keep you from sinning. And if you wonder why you keep doing the same thing that you know you're not supposed to be doing, you have to stop and ask yourself, do I really truly fear God? right and so I didn't truly fear God that's why I would do this and she's like why do you do that she's like do you fear God and 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 what and I don't think she meant to do this but the look on her face to me said disgust and I don't think she was disgusted with me but was disgusted with my behavior because she's like no you're better than this and she's like do you fear God and it, it and listen, and that changed everything for me. All right, I'm done with all my rambling. That's it. Uh, but yeah, you gotta listen. Gotta love the word. Gotta love the word. So listen, y'all write that down. Y'all write that down. The fear of the Lord will keep me from sinning. The fear of the Lord will keep me from sinning. I'm here to tell you, the fear of the Lord will keep you from sinning. What else did I highlight today? And then from the commentary. Um, oh, did I give um, our devotional? Let's uh, declaration. Let uh, one declaration. Y'all type this in the comments. I decree and declare. I declare that I trust God to be my strength. I declare that I trust God to be my strength. I declare that I trust God to be my strength. I decree and declare that my life and the lives of my family are covered by the wings of God. In Jesus name hashtag waking early for his glory I decree and declare that I am protected by the shield of the Lord in Jesus name hashtag waking early for his glory I decree and declare that I am blessed of the Lord I'll read them again I decree and declare that I am blessed of the Lord and he has empowered me to conquer all things hashtag waking early for his glory Again, I decree and declare that my life and the lives of my family are covered by the wings of God in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that I am protected by the shield of the Lord in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that I am blessed of the Lord and he empowered me to conquer all things in Jesus' name. And I want to tell y'all, I wrote down another declaration. And all three times, 
I looked at these declarations and read them. I skipped over one in particular, and I'm not exactly sure why. I need to figure out why the devil tried to make me skip over this, but I'm going to give it to y'all. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. Y'all type that in the comments. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. Making the devil mad this morning. He didn't want me to speak that out loud. I decree and declare that I will not die before my time. 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 All right. decree and declare I will not die before my time. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. All right, I'm done. I have to hop off of here. I keep hearing somebody in the hallway. I'm like, why do I keep hearing things? All right, so I love you all. I think I got everything. Um, so that's it. That's all I have for today. Um, I pray that you all were blessed. Today is Friday, so I will see you all on Monday. Um, and I think that's it. All right, so I love y'all. Let's see. Amen to all declarations. Yes, amen. All right, I have to hop off of here because I got to change my shirt. <laughs> Someone is up. I need to go over and see what's going on back there. All right. Love y'all. Bye.